Hello and welcome back to Bandit's Ballads. Towards the end of the previous chapter, Balon Blacktide put together an army strong enough to besiege the Kuzaid Khanate capital of Makeb, so let's not waste any more time and see how it goes. As always, we cannot storm the walls until we finish building the siege equipment. A battering ram, a couple of siege towers, two catapults, a ballista and a trebuchet were queued for construction. While the men were hard at work, I'd keep a watchful eye and rally them against incoming threats, if and when they show up. For the first five days, the situation was rather calm, if we ignore the panicking caravans who kept trying to cross the bridge and fleeing in terror at the mere sight of my banners. It looks like this trade artery has been momentarily closed for maintenance while Makeb is undergoing a change of management. After a while, however, a few Kuzeid lords and their small retinues started showing up and watching my moves with great interest, and I hoped that before anyone else arrives, I'd finish constructing the artillery and launch my assault. I was wrong. Just a few hours later, the Khanate brought an entire army to bear, which left me with two options. The first one was to launch the attack without artillery, maybe take this city and then try to defend it from the incoming army, but since that would result in a lot of casualties on my side, or even total annihilation, I chose the second option, which is to allow them to attack me and use the rocky terrain to my advantage. I'd wager my 500 Ironborn can easily defeat their 700. You've seen it done before, albeit on a smaller scale. All I had to do was clog the choke point between the cliffs with my shield bearers and have them hold the line while the archers do the killing. Unfortunately, I did not pay good attention to our position and when the battle began, we were nowhere near the cliffs, we actually had to trudge along over there and get information. Luckily, we made it there in the nick of time and I could position my men according to plan. As expected, everybody did their jobs masterfully. At first, only the Kuzeid horse archers came by and attempted to shoot us down, but my bowmen made short work of them. Looks like having the high ground isn't much of an advantage, or if it is, it gets cancelled if you're also on your high horse. Not long after, their cavalry arrived, but this terrain does not favor them either, so we handled them too. And after a few have tasted the bite of my spear, the rest decided to pull back and promptly got shot in the back like fish in a barrel, but the best part of it all was fighting shoulder to shoulder with my dear wife. She's almost as fierce as me. In a last ditch effort to deal some damage, the remaining few lancers charged head first into our shield wall and the result, as you can imagine, was not pleasant for them. Eventually their footmen showed up, ready to cut through my barricade. I'm not sure how walking single file into our weapons will help them accomplish that goal, but I know better than to question the tactical genius of my enemies. It did serve me well thus far. On a more serious note, that was only a small error on the part of the rank and file because, soon enough, their entire force gathered up and were putting up some serious resistance. Or are we the ones resisting? Hmm, technical details bore me. The important part is that the enemy was attacking us with all their might and my men held the line as best as they could. Well, I offered moral support in the form of cutting down as many hostiles as possible. Infantry with their backs turned on me, cavalry that broke through the lines, and even the occasional archer who ran out of arrows and decided to charge at us with his sword. This continued for quite some time and I lost count of how many foes I struck down, but no matter how large that number is, it was my soldiers who did the heavy lifting. By the time we routed the first wave of infantry, half of the enemy forces have been eliminated. However, we were starting to suffer from attrition because I lost nearly a quarter of my men and the archers almost ran out of ammunition. Out of 128 bowmen, only 24 of them still had arrows in their quivers and even those were nearly depleted and as such, I needed to do something if I wanted to survive the Kuzeid's second wave. This is problematic because the rangers are supposed to be doing most of the killing and without ammo, we're screwed. But I had an idea, maybe not a great one, but I could make myself useful in another way besides slicing the enemy to ribbons. You see, whenever a soldier falls in battle, he drops his gear and, uh, 
There's a lot of horse archers falling off the cliffs and getting themselves killed. So I dropped my javelins and instead of fighting, I took it upon myself to grab whatever quivers are lying on the ground and deliver them to my archers so that they may continue shooting. I have no idea how much of an impact this would make, but it's better than nothing. For the rest of this battle, that would be my sole focus, or it would have been if there were more quivers around. I'd obviously have to keep fighting if the situation called for it and I even managed to defeat a few more horse archers who survived the fall. Unfortunately I also have crossbows in my ranks and the Kuzeits don't carry any bolts for me to scavenge. So it seems that these guys will have to kill the enemy by merely gazing upon them. As I was playing the role of courier, not much happened. Just an exchange of projectiles between my rangers and the horse bowmen up on the cliff, and through sheer luck, I didn't get caught in the crossfire. But soon, the second wave arrived and since there were no more arrows for me to deliver, I resumed the role of killer. I needed to be careful though because if I get knocked out, my men will attempt to do their own thing and most likely get themselves murdered. It's far more important for me to stay safe than to plant cuisines into the dirt. I'm not a gardener after all. For the following few minutes, me and the lads have done a commendable job holding back the endless green tide of Kuzeyats, but because half of us were helplessly staring at the enemy, we suffered heavy losses and as such, our reinforcements had to enter the fray. 100 fresh archers could provide much needed relief if they managed to get behind the shield wall, while those with depleted quivers were volunteered to join the front lines. Unfortunately, our second wave arrived exactly where we have when the battle started and needed to run all the way over here, through the arrows of 200 nomads who were standing in the way. If we had a proper position from the very beginning, they would have been safe, but since fate ordained that they arrive from the opposite side, most of them pointlessly lost their lives attempting to cross the battlefield. Out of a hundred men, less than twenty made it here and I was running out of options. Still, I decided to hold this position and in their desperation, the stepbrothers sent their third wave upon us which consisted solely of archers. They still had arrows, I don't know why they charged at us with melee weapons when they could have shot us from a safe distance, but it appears that fortune favors me after all, despite the bad hand I was dealt with the positioning. After losing a few more men, and by a few I mean quite a lot, they eventually came to that same realization, so they backed off and started using their bows, hesitantly. Because they were indecisive, I went towards them with my shield raised to bait them into drawing their swords and it worked, to a certain degree, until I made a few mistakes and got myself severely injured, at which point I ordered everyone to rush forth and cut the enemy down. By now, the Kuzates have almost been destroyed and I have gained numeric superiority, so I knew that my men can overwhelm them with sheer numbers if I happen to kill over. But if I were to fall before giving that order, there's no telling what my lads would have done. Probably gotten themselves shot to death like they almost did about a year ago. With nothing else for me to do, I climbed up on my horse and prepared my spear for slaughter. As soon as I'm no longer stuck in traffic, I'll put it to good use. Or so I thought before getting shot off my saddle. I fall knowing that I've done the best I could to lead my men to victory against overwhelming odds. Now it was up to them to stand firm and follow their final order. It is a bit difficult for my footmen to defeat the remaining horse archers, even though the riders are outnumbered, but I believe in them. The enemy cannot outrun us forever. Towards the end of this battle, the only ones left were 33 Ironborn and 8 Kuzeyats, who fought to the last man, taking out a third of my remaining forces before they perished. The last man was a Khan's guard, by the way. That's probably one of the most frightening warriors in Calradia. Imagine what I could do with 500 of them. And so, the battle was won. A Pyrrhic victory, but a victory nonetheless. Only 22 of my men were left standing by the end of it. 218 were merely wounded and could get back up again after some time, but 
269 have departed towards the watery halls where they will feast for all eternity and revel in the glory they have won this day. However, over 400 Canaanites were sacrificed to the drowned gods, including one of their leaders and another 300 were left for dead. As for myself, I scored a nice amount of kills before going down. When it was all said and done, we captured the Kuzeit nobility and claimed the spoils of war, which I estimate to be over 70,000 dinars. Not a great payout, considering all we've lost, but it'll keep us in business. This battle also proved to the Canate that I am not to be trifled with, and because I put the fear of the drowned god in them, they were willing to pay me a tribute of 300 dinars per day. How sweet of them, unfortunately. I want something slightly more valuable. Thing is, I cannot besiege this city with a mere 22 men. So I needed to return into friendly territory, rest for a while until my injured troops make a recovery, and then go on and rebuild my forces once more. I've already shown you how that's done in the previous chapter, so we won't go over it again in great detail. All you need to know is that I did not care who I recruited. Volunteers, involunteers, mercenaries, and of course, bandits. I actually had to ditch my army to be able to catch some of the gangs roaming around. Too many people marching around slow each other down. At some point I even noticed a noble of the Imperium decimating a group of bandits. So I decided to chase after him, put his soldiers to the sword and free my fellow outlaws. I did lose 14 men in this battle, but gained 18 plus a lot of expensive loot, so all in all, that was a good trade. In my travels I also ran into an old friend, Gifor, and even though I was being chased by three other Imperials, I decided to swing by and say hello. Because I just couldn't mind my own business, the other three managed to catch me, but Don't. despite being outnumbered, I was not afraid because my men are better trained. As for how that battle went, uh, well, you've seen it a thousand times before. What can I say, I like keeping things simple, but if I were to give a quick overview, I placed my archers at the edge of a nearby forest to keep them safe from an incoming cavalry charge, well, the infantry stood its ground and the riders followed me. Since the imps had to come to us and we had the terrain advantage, we easily defeated them. I did lose about 50 men though, so it did set me back a little, but I've had worse. Besides those encounters, not much of note has happened. I mean a new employment center opened up in the far east of Sturgia, but I doubt that will be relevant anytime soon. Anyway, a month after my Pyrrhic victory outside the gates of Makeb, my army was complete once more. Mostly recruits, but you know I can easily raise them up into proper soldiers. To this end, I did spend a bit of my gold to bulk buy a bunch of cheap weapons. Pitchforks, blacksmith hammers and other peasant tools. My guys seem to prefer quantity over quality, in fact, I even came up with a mathematical formula dividing the amount of money a weapon is worth to the amount of experience a soldier would get from receiving it as a gift. The lower that ratio, the better. I don't view this as paying the gold price, I see it as getting the most out of my rating. I've already paid the iron price for all that I have. Every piece of equipment I wear has a story. When everything was ready, instead of going straight for the city, I decided to test the waters by laying waste to its bound villages, which would accomplish two things. One, it would severely hamper food production, which can push the town's garrison towards starvation, and two, it'll provoke the Kuzeits into responding to my aggression and send me all they've got. I don't want to get ambushed like I have in my first attempt, I want to be ready for them. To that effect, I also blockaded the city and made some siege preparations, but I would leave it all behind should the Kalasar bring a sizable force. My primary goal is to prevent trade caravans from supplying the locals with precious food, if only for a couple of days. Soon enough, a few lords made their approach, but there weren't enough of them to fight me. Yet. Still, I left. I had to get into position before more of them arrived. I didn't have to wait long. Let's see. 
622 of them versus 534 of us. I'd say we have a chance. Especially now since we have a proper position on the battlefield, unlike last time. And besides that, I am now armed with a ton of experience from the two previous battles I've fought in this terrain. It's a bit cramped since my lads can't stand on the water, but we made the best out of the limited space we had, made sure that everyone can freely flail their arms around, and then we took our places into the proper formations. After taking their sweet time and nearly making us die of boredom, the nomads arrived. You can probably guess what happened for the next few minutes afterwards. I mean, you've already seen how it's done, although if we're being honest, I was a lot more efficient this time around. More as a commander than a warrior. After we crushed 90% of the attacking force, my men were ordered to charge and clean up the rest. I attempted to help them out, as I always do, but I uh, got shot off my horse, as I always do. It was but a scratch, and as my doctor tended to it, I heard the men describe the final moments of the battle and how they menacingly walked towards the Kuzeid horse archers and pushed them off the cliffs. To quote one of my generals, the canate got swept away by the black tide. It was like a scene straight from a book, more specifically, the book I stole from that aspiring maester all those years ago. But due to some unspecified tactical errors, I lost 86 of my men and another 100 were injured, so you know what must be done. Fortunately, the rest of the lads were now a lot more experienced. No longer mere grunts that die in a couple of hits. Now they die in three, maybe even four if they're lucky. And just like them, I have also gained a lot of expertise, especially in athletics and leadership. Now I won't flinch in pain every time I get slapped, and I can add a lot more soldiers to my ranks. A week after that battle, my army was back at full strength, but before launching my next offensive, I decided to take a look at the political situation. It would appear that the southerners are willing to pay a hefty tribute just so they wouldn't have to be on the opposite end of my sword. I've barely interacted with them, so I have no idea why they're paying me this much. Perhaps they've heard what happened to the other factions and want to play it safe. Oh well, they're willing to pay 2k per day just so that they can stay out of my way. Works for me. None of what they have is of any immediate interest to the Ironborn. The pinks and the greens, however, uh, wait. One of my men told me they're not green, they're teal? What the hell does that mean? Guards! Remove this man at once. <clears throat> Where were we? Ah oh, yeah, the Empire and the Canate are in possession of a few forts that I want. Come to think of it, the Sturgeons as well, but I'm at peace with them for the moment. Anyway, everyone was ready for our next assault, but on our way there, we met the Khan and his son yet again, this time with a lot more soldiers under their command. Since they could potentially interfere with my conquest, they had to be removed. Unlike last time, however, Monchug gave me a lot more trouble than Chagan, probably because he had more manpower. The casualties those two inflicted upon us could set me back for a few more days, but I decided to just march towards my target and recruit whoever I can along the way. But when I arrived, I ran into some trouble. Nothing I couldn't handle, but it prevented me from actually laying siege to Makeb. There were a lot of patrols nearby, and every time they saw my banners approaching, they ran back into town, adding to its garrison. I can handle the 400 defenders who are stationed inside, but a couple hundred more would make this mission impossible. I tried getting them to run the other way, but that didn't work either, so the only thing I could do was provoke the Kalasar into attacking me once more. It's the only way to get those assholes out of town. So I put the nearest village to the torch, and when I was done, I assumed the same position as before. I mean, I would prefer to just chase down the smaller individual parties and wipe them out one by one, but my large army is incapable of such mobility, and if I disband it, my followers might just get their parties destroyed, invalidating all my work thus far. So the only thing I can do is bait them here. As the fires in the village were still raging, enough horse lords gathered up that they could attack us. 
684 versus 544. Since I had plenty of prior experience, I positioned my men a lot better than I did last time and then the slaughter began. By the end of it, I was surprised to realize I was still standing, as did most of my men. We only lost 23 soldiers this time around, so this is the most decisive victory I could have possibly claimed. For every one of us that fell, 10 foes were brought down with them. Now, I am aware there's other tactics I could use. I don't need to rely upon the terrain, but the point of these battles is to grind the Kuzeyets down for long enough to lay claim to their capital. Victory is not enough. I must also pay as small a price as possible for it. That is the goal of these fights. Otherwise, I'll keep running around, getting my army decimated and then rebuilding it over and over and over again and probably die of old age before I can sit upon a throne. But in spite of my efforts, there were still plenty of enemies around and some of them still refused to leave the city so I might have to prepare for another fight. Only thing I can do is assume my position and wait for our enemies to come to us. That didn't take long. In just a couple of days since our last battle, the Khans brought a whopping 850 corpses to be. I wouldn't have called them that if they ambushed me while laying siege to their city, but in this spot, I know I have the best position I could hope for. And not only that, but most of my warriors have already reached veteran status. Look at these boys. An entire contingent of Batanian Fian champions. Well, most of them are reformed forest bandits. I mean, they're in my crew, they're still bandits, but they got better at their job. I haven't really paid attention to what they were doing, I was mostly focused on standing in the shield wall, waiting for the enemy infantry to arrive, but before they did, I was informed that we've demolished 150 enemies before they murdered even one of us. That's my archers doing, I'm proud of those boys. When the Kuzeid infantry started pouring in, however, I was guaranteed to lose some soldiers. Nobody lives forever, especially in the front lines. As always, the men formed an impenetrable wall, the bowmen shot whatever dared to make a move, and I offered them encouragement. After a bit of slicing and dicing, then waiting for the second wave, then dicing and slicing some more, the enemy footmen were completely obliterated, but their archers remained and they weren't too keen on repeating their compatriots' mistakes. An exercise in futility. After all that killing, I now outnumbered them almost 2 to 1 and we had shields to protect us from their projectiles. An infantry charge was all it took to bring them to heal. That and me cutting them down from the saddle, just like I've learned. When the dust settled, uh, metaphorically speaking, there's no dust here, only snow. All 800 enemies have been slain. The price for that? 39 of my soldiers. Another 59 have been put out of commission for a while, but they'll be back. The loot wasn't too shabby either, but we don't really need to talk about it anymore. It keeps me in business, that's all you need to know. This was good, but I need to rebuild my army once more. Or do I? Maybe I do, but since I've dealt a serious blow to the enemy, one that they're unlikely to recover from anytime soon, I decided to strike the iron while it's hot and head straight to Makeb, foregoing the recruitment stage altogether. Before organizing the big event, I used my criminal expertise to sneak into town and have a chat with the ransom broker. He paid 12k for the soldiers I have captured, and he would have paid a hundred thousand more for the Kuzeit nobles in my custody. Thanks, but no thanks. I'd rather keep them hostage for a little while longer to prevent them from raising an army and interrupting my, uh... Special military operation, though in the future, I wouldn't mind using this as my primary money-making method. Kidnapping seems to be quite profitable these days. And now it's time to finish what we've been working towards for the last few months. The moment of truth. Let the siege of Makeb commence. Before assaulting the walls, however, we need to make preparations. Camp, barricades, twin towers, battering ram and trebuchets. 
It'll take us a few days to build those, time in which the town's garrison is going to run out of food and possibly perish to starvation. During the planning stage, it is extremely important to pull your artillery pieces to safety and out of the enemy's range. And only once they're all built do you get to deploy all four of them simultaneously. In theory, this would destroy the artillery of the defenders, so that they cannot mass murder our soldiers or wreck our siege equipment. In practice, before the bombardment even properly began, the Kyrgyz clan put together an army that was rushing towards me, reinforced by several other Kuzeyat lords. I could use the cliffs for the fifth time, albeit poorly since we're out of position, and then waste even more time rebuilding my army, but our siege preparations did have a bit of an impact upon the defenders. A quarter of their catapults were destroyed, and a fifth of the garrison succumbed to starvation. This won't be the perfect siege, but under the circumstances, these are the best conditions I'll ever have. Let's get this done, we'll worry about that army later. Because my men were confident about our impending success, they arranged themselves into some strange formations. Three groups of infantry combined with archers. Hm, this never happened in any of my previous sieges. The infantry and rangers were always in separate groups. Eh, whatever, after the four previous battles I just didn't care anymore, so I allowed them to do whatever the hell they wanted. Sergeants in charge! My only job was to make sure that the siege engines make contact with the walls and the gate, then charge alongside my men to wipe out the defenders and if anything went wrong during this process, I would pull everyone back and then prepare for another battle in the cliffs. As I've said, the goal of those battles is to grind the Kuzeyats down, but to be honest, that's also starting to grind my gears. But back to the siege. There's a savage beauty to the sight of my trebuchets firing upon the enemy's fortifications on a cold wintry night ravaged by a snowstorm while my siege towers are menacingly creeping towards the town's walls. It would appear that winter has come for the Khanate. But I can't just take in the gorgeous vistas. I'd have to contribute to this siege as well, and the best way to do so right now is to head over to the barricades and put my crossbow to good use. It took a few attempts, but I eventually managed to score three headshots. But after that brilliant display of pure marksmanship skill, it was time to scale the siege towers with my men. They were a bit hesitant to do so, but after I promised to give the man with the largest kill count the biggest share of the loot, they all rushed in with renewed fervor. And so did I. I intended to have the largest kill count and sliced my first foe before I even finished climbing the ladder. And because my men were keeping the other defenders occupied, I was able to sneak in a few more kills before adopting a defensive position. I call this move the turtle. Well, technically it's not really a move since I cannot move, but as long as I'm crouched, nobody can get through my block and if used right, this little trick will allow my men to make progress while the enemy is busy battering my bulwark. Of course, this can only be done as long as my shield lasts, but that's not a problem for now. But I didn't need to do that for long. My battle-hardened warriors can wipe the enemy out even without my intervention, so in just a few seconds, the defenders on this side of the wall were overwhelmed and attempted to retreat. I made sure they couldn't. My mastercrafted gear is no match for the militia and peasants who are tasked with defending this city. When all nearby hostile life signs have been removed, I swept across the walls with murderous intent, seeking ever more victims. Any mercy that I would have had was washed away by the Kuzeyats' relentless downpour of attacks over the past couple of months. But very soon, there was no one left to kill. Everybody still alive retreated into the keep where I followed, along with 18 of my legionaries. In there, I did cut a few enemies down, but eventually I found the task to be unworthy of my direct involvement, so I allowed my soldiers to continue on their own while I'd cheer them on. After a short while, the shouts quieted down for a moment, and then the triumphant roars of my men filled the halls of the keep, announcing our victory. 
And so we have won, and the former capital of the Kuzeid Khanate has become the current capital of the first bandit kingdom of Calradia, the Arenborn. In retrospect, the battle wasn't too challenging, but that's because we had time to prepare every single piece of equipment as well as starve out a portion of the garrison. If we didn't, we might have found this assault exceedingly difficult, if not outright impossible, forcing me to retreat and try to fight Mesui's army in an unfavorable terrain with a depleted military force. Speaking of that army, we still have to deal with it, but for now, let's just celebrate our victory. And I don't mean just this siege, but everything else we've been through. We fought long and hard to build a crew, get the riches, and eventually form our bandit kingdom, and it all culminated with us earning our place on this continent. But we're not yet done. I've still got a few plans to put in motion, but I'll leave that for another chapter because this one is long enough already. So, thank you lads for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye for now.